Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and today we are doing the first installment of my new series, Plant Aesthetics. So basically in this series, I'm going to go through different popular plant aesthetics, some more popular than others, and just sort of break down some elements within those aesthetics and how you can achieve them yourself. I also have some realistic images from my patrons. So thank you to my patrons for contributing contributing to this video for this. I'm starting off with boho because that is my plant aesthetic, so I feel like it's a good place to start for me personally. I feel like I have a lot to say, and I have dressed as a caricature <laughs> of boho. So I have a macrame element, I have some hanging plant earrings, I will have these linked down below if you're interested, and then I have some earth tones in my shirt here. There's lots of different ways that you can go about boho, but the tones of this plant aesthetic is very natural and neutral, and kind of beige and orange and brown and wood. So we're first gonna look at my plant room and how it has sort of evolved. So in these photos, you can see that I have a lot of wicker and cane. So this is actually, the rocking chair is a bent wood um, rattan rocking chair. I still have it, but the base of it the seat part of it opened, like it broke open and I need to replace it. But that really is like the main piece that is yelling boho. I think that it's important to have a few key pieces that are very, very boho, but every piece of furniture in the room does not need to scream. I'm made of rattan and <laughs> bent wood and all of these other things. The arched shelf is one of my most popular items in my home, and I actually got it on Facebook Marketplace. It was $30. Another element that you can see in these photos is my woven rug. So I'm gonna talk more about this woven rug a little bit later, but it's just a really great rug. I got it off of Rugs USA, I think, and there's lots of different iterations of like a woven rug. So that's something I also wanted to call out. Now we have the next iteration of the plant room, which is a little bit more in your face boho because I now have the furniture set. So this furniture set was actually made in Japan and a family was living there in like the 60s or something and then they moved back to the US and they brought the set with them. And that's how it is here now. And they had had it that whole time and then the parents I think passed away and so their kids were just selling the set. So I ended up with it. It's two chairs, a coffee table and a love seat and it's absolutely beautiful. I don't ever plan on getting rid of it. I love it so much. I hope to always have a sunroom to put it in. But the changes that I made to the plant room when I updated it was I just made more room for the plants to uh, be displayed on the wall. So as you can see, I have all terracotta pots on the wall. I really like the cohesiveness of having a single color of a pot for that element right there, but I do really like to add in different types of pottery and colors um, within the pottery to give me a little bit more of a color variation because if not, I mean, you do have the green of the leaves, but if not, it can kind of feel like a very set color palette, like in brown. So you got the green from the plants, which is super, super important, which is like the whole reason that we even are talking about this. And then um, the more reddish terracotta look. I think that's a really nice break between all of the, the brown. As you can see, all of the wood is pretty light. So this is unstained cedar. And if anything, like I'd put a clear coat on it to just like enhance the color. I never planned on staining it or doing anything like that to darken the wood because I wanted it to stay pretty light and on the same color family or reference as the sitting, the sitting set that I found. The cushions for this chair set um, are original and I really actually quite like that gingham look because it's just a nice little pattern. It kind of breaks up the rattan and it just brings a little bit of whimsy. So I like adding little elements like that. So now I wanna move into how you can create this look and what types of furniture and accessories to look into uh, to create this look. So first of all, we're gonna talk about furniture. I think that furniture is the most important part because plants are already pretty boho. Like I feel like plants can transform into any aesthetic Obviously there are so many and a lot of our collections look really similar. We have a lot of the same plants out there. Honestly, with boho, it is pretty eclectic and you can find a lot of these items thrifted or from antique malls or you can you know, sort of thrift online through Etsy and things like that. The first element that I wanted to discuss is this natural rattan plant stand from Walmart. The wood color is very light and it looks pretty strong in structure. 
So typically when you have this like bent wood, those are going to be a little bit sturdier of pieces, whereas something more like this, this is a wicker woven basket plant stand. So these are a little bit harder to keep in good condition. And so when you're out thrifting or antique shopping, you might find a lot of these, but they're not gonna be, they could possibly not be in the greatest condition, which is something that I've experienced a lot, especially since I moved to the Midwest. I find items like this all the time, but they're not always in super good condition. So these need to be well taken care of and well loved in order for them to live for a long time. And that's not always the case, but if you do find one that's in good condition, I really suggest you swipe it up because finding one that looks like this one is really hard. So if you wanted to play it a little bit safer, this natural rattan plant stand is a really great option. And as far as a vintage option or like a reused option, I find tables like this one, this Etsy vintage mid-century tall plant stand, I find stuff like this all the time. And again, because there is no woven element, it does stand the test of time a lot longer. Um, it's basically, well, it's, it's wood, so it's a lot stronger. And also something that I notice is that it holds up to the water a little bit better. Of course, we always wanna make sure that we're using saucers and making sure that our furniture pieces aren't getting wet because that will ruin them. But sometimes it, it inevitably happens. And um, if you're using like those more woven pieces, it will break it down a lot faster. So this can handle the weight of the pot really, really well. So if you have bigger plants, really suggest getting something like this. Another more recently manufactured piece is this rattan indoor plant stand. And I found this one on Amazon. And so I think it was around $70. And so this one can definitely hold, I mean, I don't personally have this product, but it looks really strong. Um, it's a stool essentially with like a basket on top. And you could probably DIY something similar if you found a basket that you liked. Um, but this one is really nice. It's tall. I think that plant stands are absolutely essential in your plant home decor just because it gets the plants on different levels and it allows for the eyes to sort of visually move throughout the room rather than everything being on one singular level, which is another reason why I really like the plant wall with it being so tall. It kind of draws the eyes up and around, um, whereas if everything was all on one level down here, it's just not as effective. Like it doesn't look as visually appealing. Plant stands are super, super helpful in that. And we already kind of talked about this um, woven plant stand, so I won't go too far into it, but these do tend to be sort of shorter as well. And you can get these with really cool designs. I've seen like an hourglass design for these. The, the possibilities honestly are endless and I think they're super, super beautiful and striking if you can find one in good condition. Some other furniture and elements that I think are really important are rugs and shelves. So again, having the eyes have somewhere to go and then having something to ground the room. So this is a really great woven rug. This is the one that I had in here prior to the rug that I currently have. Now this room gets a lot of foot traffic. So that rug, it was getting a little bit worn. So that was sort of an issue because this room is the first room you walk into in my house. And so all of the foot traffic was coming in through here and it just got a lot of wear and tear. So if you have an area of your home where your plants are that isn't like, let's say the front door or like exactly where your dogs go outside to pee every single time they go outside, I would really suggest this woven rug. I think it was really great. It doesn't have to be this specific one, but I really like the idea of having that woven baskety material on the ground. Ladder shelves are also a great option. Bamboo shelves are a great option. Bamboo is pretty cheap and it usually holds up pretty well. So that's a really great option for you if you are more on a budget or if you're just wanting something simple. There's lots of units that have like you know, squares and it's like a cube system. So you can put a plant in each little section. Next up, baskets are a really great way to add in some warmth or just some extra boho vibes to your plant area or just your home in general if you're wanting to just shift around your aesthetic. Um, this is a folding basket. I, I believe that Ikea sells one like exactly like this and they're pretty cheap. So if you have an Ikea near you, that's definitely an option. Um, but this one over here is from Target. And I think this is a really great option too. You can put a plant in it, which is really great because if you have a larger plant, 
Uh, you might not want to put it in a ceramic pot just because those can get super, super heavy. So you can use these baskets as a cover pot, which is my favorite way to use them. Basically, you just pop the plant in it and it disguises that nursery pot and it looks really nice. Again, I've also seen people DIY a basket plant stand. So they buy a more structured basket and then put it on like a little saucer with some legs and then you've now you have a basket plant stand and I think those are really cool too. Now for the plant displays, I feel like it goes without saying that macrame is very, very boho. So it, there's tons of macrame artists out there to support on Etsy or online or wherever you support local artists. I think that macrame is absolutely essential, which is, um, I'm like subconsciously now moving my hair away so that you can see my beautiful earrings. But yeah, macrame is really, really an important element. Uh, macrame rope is obviously a natural material and it generally comes in more earthy colors. Although if you wanted to do a pop of color, you could definitely do a colorful macrame hanger, but generally it is more of like a tan or mustard color cotton rope. And so, so many different designs. There's certain designs that even have beads in them. And as you can see, there's just tons and tons of options. And there's even cool options where there's like a shelf attached to a macrame piece. Um, I just, I love macrame. And I do wish that I, there was more opportunities for me to have macrame in this room. I think once I move some plants out of here for the greenhouse, I will be able to add in more macrame elements. But right now I have one macrame hanger in the corner over here, and I'm planning to put another one in the corner over here uh, because one of my plants is about to outgrow the wall. So we got to figure something out. But macrame is really great. Generally, it's pretty affordable. And it's one of those things that you buy that will last you forever. It's like buying a, a nice piece of pottery. You know, you can use it on one plant for a year and a half. And then once the plant outgrows it, you can move that plant to a different pot. And then now this pot has um, availability, it has vacancy <laughs> to now host a different plant. So it's one of those things that kind of is like a gift that keeps on giving. And when you invest in a nice piece of macrame, um, it should last you for forever, honestly. Also, it's a really easy thing to DIY. If you ever wanted to do a little bit of a DIY, it's definitely entry level. I mean, of course there's artists out there who do really, really intricate things, but if you wanted to just make something on your own in a couple of minutes and just go out and buy the materials real quick, definitely suggest it as a beginner friendly DIY. There's lots of tutorials out there online for macrame and I just think it's a really beautiful way to, you know, infuse some of your own creativity in your plant spaces if you have the time, desire, and capacity. I discussed before that pottery was really important for me in this designing of this room because I wanted it to feel very cohesive. All of my plants have different textures and colors and shapes and growth habits. And so I wanted a little bit of a sense of uniformity. And that doesn't necessarily mean that every pot in this room is terracotta, but a majority of them are, or at least within the terracotta color family. So if I do have a different colored pot, it is either white or maybe like a blush pink color. So it's still very much so in that earth tone vibe. So earth tones for me is what I go off of for my pots. If it's not an earth tone, I'm probably not going to like that pot very much. I don't really spend too much on pottery, um, although I have been really enjoying buying some, spe some specialty pottery lately. But again, it is still within that basic terracotta vibe, so the prices really aren't too bad. I have some options here. These are both from Etsy if you're interested in these at all. Um, this seven inch curvy terracotta pot, it's so perfect for boho. As you can see, there's a little bit of color variation in that terracotta and that terracotta will change colors as you're watering it. It'll get some patina and I really like that it has a saucer. I don't know if it's connected, but it looks like it does come with a saucer, which is always nice when specialty pottery has the option of adding on a saucer because then you have something that matches it rather than just using like a random saucer around your house for a beautiful pot like that, which I have done and I do all the time, but it is nice when you can have a little match. And then this next one over here is more of like, not an urn, but it's just like shaped a little bit differently. And as you can see, just within the terracotta 
range, the colors are very different. So this one's a little bit more of a red terracotta. And um, I love that terracotta can come in so many different colors. You can get more of like a bleached terracotta. You can get more of a darker terracotta and everything in between. I really like that. Um, even though it's the same material, it can be multicolored and um, go on a whole spectrum. So this one also has a nice element of like some lines going around the pot. I just think that pots that have a little bit of a visual interest like that are really nice. If you're going to be investing in pottery, I think buying something like one of these is really nice because again, it is the gift that keeps on giving and it is worth the buy, but also buying like four or five of the exact same pot from the big box store. Nothing wrong with it. My back wall here is filled with identical pots because they needed to be a specific pot to be able to go on the hooks for that wall. But generally in other places in my plant room, I like to keep it a little bit more fun and um, have a little bit more variety in the colors and shapes of my terracotta. So I wanna end off by showing you some more realistic versions of some boho rooms. These submissions are from one of my patrons, Jules, who is so sweet and has really, really great style. So I wanted to point out some excellent boho moments in her photos so that if this is inspiring to you, you have a little bit more to go off of than my own plant room and things that I personally like. So first of all, we have the macrame hanger, which is absolutely beautiful. You can see this one is like a jute material. So again, I actually, I said earlier that macrame is usually like a cotton rope, but it can also come in a jute, which is a little bit more of like a rough, like twine material. And that is really nice too, because the color is super natural. So this one has really nice design on it. And this is very, very easy to make. If you wanted to make this macrame hanger, it would be super easy for you just by learning a couple of macrame knots. I love that Jules has this plant that's kind of like living on the wall and like climbing across. I love seeing that in, in our Zoom calls. We do Zoom calls once a month with my patrons and I just love seeing that in the background of her video every month. It's, it's so pretty. What I really like about this setup right here is the pottery. So as you can see, it's not like terracotta pottery, but it is those natural colors. And then the furniture piece that it's sitting on is a light wood and it has a cool rounded edge on it and some fluting. That's a really cool piece of furniture, Jules. I really, really like that. And it's perfect for boho. So not all boho furniture needs to be like rattan and cane. This is a really wonderful sturdy piece that definitely could be boho. It could probably also fit into like a mid-century or even like an eclectic style. Um, but given that we're looking at this through the frame of a boho room, it's definitely boho and I love that. And then this is so cool. So this shelving unit is very boho because you can see that it has um, some rope elements. So any natural element is ideal. So I love that this uh, this wood shelving system is made up of just wood and rope. It's very simple, very minimal. And then it's just filled with so many beautiful plants. Jules, I love your collection. There's a little Fetonia here, this beautiful Gapersha, uh, and this queen. I'm sorry, but that is just so beautiful. Um, every plant on this shelf is absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, I really, really love these photo examples because this is like a more toned down boho, whereas my room and my attire today is a caricature of boho, right? This is realistic and I really, really appreciate that. And something as well that I just noticed at the bottom over here is look at this plant stand. That is a beautiful example of elevating a plant even ever so slightly because it just adds like a nice visual difference in the plants, right? So it's not sitting on the floor because it is a little bit of a smaller plant. And I really don't suggest that you ever have a plant just sitting on the ground unless it's on like a saucer or it's kind of a sizable plant and it doesn't really matter if it's on the ground. I really like to get my plants um, off the ground elevated even if it is just like a couple of inches. This is so cute and that's probably something that she thrifted. I'll have to like ask her about where she got that, but you could definitely find sweet things like that thrifting or antiquing. All right, friends, that is going to be the end of this plant aesthetic boho deep dive. I'm really, really glad that I decided to put these all into like their own separate videos because there's so much to say about all of these aesthetics. So if the visuals and aesthetics and products in this video um, resonated with you at all, I would love for you to chat with me down in the comments down below. 
What are your favorite elements of a boho plant space? And of course, what are you doing to incorporate more boho vibes into your plant spaces? I'm super excited to keep going. We have a couple more aesthetics to go through. So I'm gonna put a comment in the comments and I want you guys to tell me which aesthetic we should do next. And I'm super excited to see what you guys pick because this was so fun to do a deep dive and like make like a mood board for an aesthetic. It was so much fun. So anyway, I'm gonna link as much of these items as I possibly can in the description box below if you're interested in anything that you saw. These are all products that I found within the last couple of weeks, so they all should still be available. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you're not already. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.